Okay, uh, the next speaker is In Shua. She's the CEO of um, Invasion Singapore, and she's all about supporting, finding, uh, getting Singapore's uh, local singers and bringing them to the fore. So let's welcome Inch. Oh. Thanks for having me. Okay. So, I think uh, we got Yen Hi oh, as well. Hey. <laughs> hi, everyone. Hello, hello. How are you guys uh, feeling? I mean, okay. Yeah. It's a long day indoors yeah. in the semi dark. Uh, do we have a clicker that I could yeah. grab? Okay. Oh, cool. Sorry about that. Thanks. Okay. okay. So, we are Invasion. Yes. Uh, and what do we do? So, we exist to uh, generate demand for music made in Singapore. So, we're primarily focused on influencing the young to continuously listen to more local music. And who are we? Uh, I'm In Chua, and he is Haida Abao. Yep. Uh, we have 20, 270 mutual friends. And this is actually real. So this, is real. Yeah, yeah, this is real. <laughs> yeah. And we have apparently on Tinder, if we were to see each other's Tinder's profiles, we would have one thing in common. Um, I'll just tell a little bit about Haida. Okay. He's a very analytical, uh, kind of skeptical, very deeply philosophical person. Uh, highly, 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 highly uh, skeptical. <laughs> uh, he loves games, funny memes tickle him, and uh, on a normal day, you would find him at the uh, at the office juggling a billion things. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much right. Uh, and Inch, of course, is a very, very well renowned musician here in Singapore. Uh, and she don't let the you know external little small girl type of vibe fool you. Last year, this girl took a trip down to uh, Mount Everest and she trip hiked up, up all the way. Oh, trip <laughs> up, yeah, trip up to, to Mount Everest and she hiked up all the way to, to base camp. And she's consistently out, you know, for the next adventure. Uh, she stayed for four years in a foreign country alone, so she's always a bit of an adrenaline junkie. Uh, so, what is, we cannot be more different from each other, evidently, physically. Yes. Uh, I'm yeah. Chinese, short, and uh, completely the far spectrum from his tall... Middle Eastern <laughs> yeah. demeanor. No, don't worry, I'm like fine. I'm the type that, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, I love life. <laughs> and, and you know, the bacon is great. And so, I enjoy the occasional beer. <laughs> so, we're very different. So, what is this one thing we have in common? Um, we both love music. Yeah. And music is in our passion and blood. So we're going to talk a little bit quick, 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 quickly about our origin story. Yeah. So, um, you know, along with many different bad decisions, including, you know, having dreadlocks at a young age, I uh, actually started down my music journey um, because I was interested in a girl in school. Of course, right? As most, most stories start, you know, it's always with a girl. So what happened was I, I got really invested in the drums. And then after that, the girl who I was interested in started waiting for me for four hours after school because I fell in love with the drums more. So this became a lifelong journey uh, of, of really just dedicating myself to the instrument. Uh, and and uh, together with these guys, uh, who we, we, don't, we don't play together anymore, sadly, but um, we were part of this uh, pop punk band uh, and, and we had a lot of fun you know, playing together uh, as, as a band. And for me, my musical experience started when I was 14 years old, when a really cute guy outside of school asked me out to go check out his band, <laughs> in which I did. And uh, it was horrible, but <laughs> I, I didn't end up going out with him, but I fell in love with music instead. So I started a band as well at the age of 16 with a bunch of guys uh, that I found off the internet. <laughs> and uh, we were called Allura. And that's how both Haida and I met. Yeah, so... At this stage, right, when we first started out, um, what was very apparent is uh, what was the fact that you know local music wasn't didn't have the kind of proliferation that it has today. So if I say you know, show of hands, how many people have at least heard about the Sam Willows? Can 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 some people show their hands? Yes. Right. Yeah. So there's there's a decent <laughs> amount of you, but if I had asked that same question about any local band at that time, I guarantee you there will be silence. Right. So. There, there is a certain level of proliferation that, that has taken over in terms of people's demand for local music. But this was not the case before, and we were rather upset about that. So we decided to take things into our own hands and go, you know what, we're going to make them listen. 
So we went down and we created a program called the Invasion Tour, which we brought to different secondary schools and tertiary institutions, and we put up shows together with, uh, you know, West Grand was, was at the time the headliner, and, and at the time we brought our friends. So Inch uh, joined us for this, this version of the tours. So it was, a, it was really, as much as it was, uh, had a serious motive, it was more fun than Pretty serious. Much, yeah. uh, we were like on average age 18, 20 when we did all of this together. And it was just really normal because play was in our DNA yes. as musicians. We were playing live, we were having lots of fun. Uh, music was really the reason. Uh, but there was no real aim yes. until we decided to bring enough. Oh, sorry, I'm jumping the gun. But we, we felt once it started being fun for us, we wanted to invite more of our friends. So we started inviting everyone we know, because that's like the most normal thing when you start playing. You can't play by yourself. So, you have to yeah. play with a lot of other people along. So we started inviting all our musician friends that eventually it just gets bigger and bigger over the years and it snowballed to what it is today. Yeah. So one, one thing to, to talk about when we talk about how and when play gets serious for us. This, they're of course, very different for, for you know, every different uh, group that, that tries to achieve something. But when we thought about when play got serious for us is when we realised that it was no longer about us. No. It, it stopped being just for fun. And it started becoming a lot more serious when we looked around and we went, you know what, this is for our community. And this is for the people that want to continue uh, going down this journey of, of you know, creating music and, and, and making their own craft or practicing their own craft. So we came up with a bit of a formula and the, and, and the way it's shaped uh, Invasion today has, has really been uh, quite interesting because we've only been technically around for maybe 11 months and uh, we've gone to 32, 30, no, actually 38 different schools now. We've impacted over 30,000 youths. I will share with you some of, some of the statistics later, but it's changed our ecosystem in such a way. So we focus very much on creating high-impact events, really good online content, and we focus on studying the youth. So we conduct youth research studies, and the data that we get goes to stakeholders who are interested in investing in the music scene. Because, you know, for a lot of things, when we do business, we often need data to back up our decisions. But this, this isn't the case for youth outreach. So as we, go, as we went about this journey, we found that research is one of the most important things. So the stakeholders that are interested in investing in, in local music know where they can put their money. So over the years, uh, we've worked with a lot of other people and we've grown uh, when, when it got serious because we really cared about our community. How was the, the challenging bit really? Because we were like, how are we going to make the audience care? Or how are we going to help this community of people? And uh, as Haida has mentioned, we do that through co events, content and research and over the years, uh, we've impacted, uh, we've sort of done different various programs. Our flagship program is, is uh, Scape Invasion Tour. So we go to 40, now about 40 over schools. Uh, we've impacted about 32,000 over uh, kids direct. It's not even, uh, on, our online engagements are in the 100,000s right now. And it really comes from the fact that play is contagious. And we've definitely seen that when we go into the schools. And it happens on a level of peers and it should happen at the levels of the audience as well. When we go into, we literally invade assembly periods where children are forced to sort of look at the stage for an hour of something. And we thought, in what better way would it be if, that if these kids do not have the opportunity to go to a show, we bring the bring show, show to them. them. We bring like huge stacks of sound equipment, the bands go in, we have radio DJs that will hype the kids up. And we talk about local music and for most of them, it is the first time they're watching live music. Prior to this, it would be all they ever hear is top 40s on the radio. And a lot of them eventually, we have gathered so many stories over the years of uh, when we first started the first alliteration of the tour, a lot of the, the musicians that are playing on tour right now has come up to us personally and say, hey, you guys came to our school like about like six years ago, yeah. and then now we've, we, we play in the band. 
and literally in our most recent tour, uh, there's been like now I guess it's even more, e it's easier to track because of social media. Pretty there much. are bands that pretty much started because a lot of the bands went to their schools. Yeah. So it's natural that play is contagious and because it's so fun, we thought that let's just build this entire thing on how contagious this funness can really be. Absolutely. So on that, on that note, um, with regards to play being contagious, there is a certain level of responsibility that comes with trying to promote something like music. Because if you are, if you are taking your craft seriously, only then will we give you the stage. Because if you don't, and you don't sound good, and you don't perform to the best of your capacity, then the stigma of local music goes back down. So, there is a certain sense of responsibility that all the stakeholders take into account when, when working together with us. So an example of the people that work together with us, this is not an exhaust, exhaustive list. Uh, next. Yeah. So we have everyone from media partners to government agencies to uh, live music venues to uh, private brands that want to utilize our platform to actually reach out to the youth. And the reason why they want to do this is because they want to align with us in an authentic way to the youth. So this way, we are actually al allowing ourselves, and, and this, this is a subject about making play serious, right? Because if you're looking to find funding for something, you have to give the advertiser or the business person a reason to invest in you. So you can only take play as seriously as the as you allow the advertiser to take you seriously or the business person to take you seriously so as we approach them now we are able to say that if you want access to the youth community we have it and you need to align with us with our objectives and that's how they actually uh, benefit from from just and as, as an example in a year um, actually we just did another show recently right so so uh, we've reached over 30, 31,000 youths. Uh, um, to date, probably 32,000 youths after the past couple of shows that we did. Uh, we have 12 articles on Juice Magazine, uh, and we are promised a, a featured cover every single, every single year. Uh, we had, you know, with regards to the community spirit coming together, we had 42 weeks of radio airplay in terms of uh, uh, advertising. So when, we, when we're talking about the, the sheer numbers of, of a movement like this, we've only been alive for 11 months, but we've hit over 200,000 youths in this period. So we can share a bit more of these details with you if you come and visit us at invasionsg.com. Um, but this, this is what we've, we've pretty much done so far. So all of this is just big numbers, like numbers, but what really I would like to share about is yeah. the fact that when you look at, although we have like 30, about 32,000 kids more than that already physically each, the number that I like to look at is that 200 new volunteers that we have. The fact that uh, every year we, 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 we kind of reach out as much as possible to get beyond uh, people who just enjoy the audience, the, who enjoy it, is people who want to be part of it. And that's where the play comes involved. Absolutely. We want to invite more people to play with us, to come hang out with us. And these 200 volunteers are kids that eventually out of this tour has reached out and go, I love this, what can I do next? Yeah. And the only play it gets serious and play will continue to be serious when we continue to include players. Yes. Imagine a world, uh, let's, uh, just like to end up with this, right? Imagine a world where the 14-year-old you can work together with a writer that's interested in pursuing his writing career, a photographer that's interested in, you know, uh, taking photos for, for a living, and um, a coder that wants to build websites for a living. And imagine using musicians as a catalyst to do that. This is something that, uh, if you guys know uh, this, this hip-hop artist in Singapore, his name is uh, Shiga Shea, uh, and he does exactly that. So he has a crew of videographers, he has a crew of photographers, he has a, a crew of people that write for him, he has a crew of people that, uh, that create websites together with him, and they all get credited, and these people are young. Like they're in their, they started this when they were, what, 16, 14, 15 years old? So through that collective experience, they've been able to elevate themselves. And we hope that you know, this trend continues. Play can only happen when the fun is authentic. And it's only then that our community will come together. Because community is a word that we throw around very easily. But, you know, when you're having fun together and it's authentic, good fun, 
it, it you won't even need to sell it really. Pretty much, yeah. So thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Will, will, you, will you all hang around after? Yes, yes. please come right. up okay, and please. talk to us. Please yeah. go up and talk to them because I, I, I love the fact that they're supporting local music and local... If we don't believe in ourselves, who else will? Right? Come on, think about it.